Ross Duncan and life does not get much better than this, does it? One of the great beaches in northern New South Wales here. How about the weather? This cross region is probably one of the nicest places on the east coast. Surf, great seafood and really friendly atmosphere. There is a great place in town, the people are great and what a spot to come for holidays. But you've got to remember, Dean, it's not always like this. It's uncompromising, addictive, and often unforgiving, with an adrenaline rush like no other. There is no practice, no second chances. It's the ultimate motorsport competition on gravel. It is rally, and this is the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, coming to you from the perfect destination in New South Wales, Coffs Harbour, home of Coates Hire Rally Australia. Once a year, Coffs Harbour really comes alive, doesn't it? It certainly does. You can feel the excitement in the air. World Rally Championship cars, Australian Rally Championship cars, classics four-wheel drives, and even side-by-side. -side. And they're all going to be battling it out in the hinterland, not too far from the centre of town, our ARC crews. It's one of our endurance series. They're going to do over 300 competitive kilometres, tough competitive kilometres. It's fantastic because this is the only sport in the world that you can compete against the world best. How cool is that? Awesome! On the menu today will feature the fight between Scott Petter and Brendan Reeves. In points terms, the pair dead heated as they come into this, the fifth round. It's the opportunity to show you just who is the best driver competing in Australia. And we'll highlight the Australian side-by-side -side challenge, the ongoing battle between Polaris and Can-Am. We begin today with a recap of the East Coast Bull Bars ARC. Scott Petter and Brendan Reeves equal points after the pre-event Armour All Power stage. Team Citroen still occupy third and fourth, but the return this round of the Warhope Warrior looks set to end Alan Rowe's fifth in the championship. A mistake in the power stage put paid to the five-point advantage that Scott Petter and Dale Moskett had over Brendan Reeves and Rhiannon Gelsomino. They come into the rally proper, level pegged in points. Pedder is undeterred. It's just a matter of uh, you know avoid, avoiding problems and managing risk as much as you can, and you know still keeping good pace because you have a good three stages. Um, you know today, not, not only yeah, setting the day up, but you're also setting the weekend up. Reeves' elation about winning the Armour All Power Stage is tempered by the fact he damaged the car soon after during media rides with WRC Rally Radio Guru Colin Clark on board for the ride of his life. Damage the rear beam. The boys did a great job getting the car ready. Uh, so now we've used our spare beam already, um, but the car's ready to go and, and we checked it out last night. Everything's nice and straight and it's just the car it was yesterday morning. There's another fight in the field, but this one's internal. Leading the way in Team Citroen is Adrian Coppen and Tim Batten. But gearbox issues in the power stage meant there was more bark than bite. Tony Sullins and Julia Barkley grabbed the three points for second. Watch this space for how the tussle pans out over the weekend as these guys are positioned within the WRC field running on the road before Reeves and Heather. We're lucky enough that the Citroen DS3s meet the FIA international rules so we're able to uh, cross enter into the WRC section so for us it's a, a bit better road position um, but you know we're still, still, still a few crossovers we've got to comply with the WRC rules. At the end of the day it's really nice to run in the field with the fast guys and you get the split times and all the cool things that everyone else gets so it's probably good. And the VWs are still in the mix. The Warhope Warriors up and down season definitely on the up with improved engine performance. Uh, Brendo and, and Scott are pushing pretty hard. To maintain their close to their times, you've got to be on the ragged edge a bit, you know. While it's a welcome return to Mick Patton and Bernie Webb in the Repco Polo. Hopefully the only fires for them will be in their belly as they look to blaze a trail to finish this round. I've always enjoyed driving the car. Um, we're just having some issues with it early on in the piece and, and redeveloping and learning it. And uh, It's been a bit of a learning curve, unfortunately, but um, yeah, character building, to say the least. Another ARC-registered team returns with a car they've been threatening to all season. Steve and Brent McKenzie are showcasing their brand-new Optico Fiesta. And if looks count for anything, the brothers from Bendigo are sure winners. I really just want to get Kays in the car. Um, see what it does, how everything works, what's, 
going to break if something does. Hopefully it doesn't, but it's always a worry with a new car. Any worries about a new car are soon to unfold as the first of three days competition in the hills surrounding Coffs Harbour come to life in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. This is Coates Hire Rally Oz. Watching the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship being held on the New South Wales North Coast, home Five, to Coates Hire Rally Australia. Three, two, one, go. 100. Despite being number one ARC car, Seven, Scott five, Petter five, is not five, first on the road. That privilege goes to the two Citroens who've joined the ranks of the WRC this weekend. Running at the back of that field means they're in front of Pitta and Reeves, so they'll find any road issues first. And it doesn't take Tony Sullins long. This is the same spot that claimed classic Claude Murray, and he and Julia Barkley have plenty to talk about come end of stage. Oh, how's that jump? Holy crap. We are gone there for a second. Their time is faster than Adrian Coppin and Tim Batten, but for good reason. Scott Petter is faster than either of the Citroens, but too slow by his own standards. Perhaps his spin in the power stage made him wary of all the jumps running in the dust of the WRC. Man, they, uh, they take some interesting lines and pull some interesting stuff out on the road, but uh, overall pretty good. We had a bit of a bit of a heavy landing over one of the big humps in there at the start, but uh, you know I think that'll be pretty good. But it isn't good enough. The rally school Mazda bounces back with vengeance after the ordeal of media day. A really good feeling in the car. Probably changing gears a little bit too early, trying to limitate the wheel spin, but we'll crack on and see how we go. Michael Bowden beats the Citroens to be six seconds behind Scott Petter. Well, I've been needed in that before, but anyway. Yeah, it's good to get the first stage over and done with, now we can settle in. Yeah. <laughs> the Repco Polo splits the times of the Citroens. Mick Patton happy to be settling in. Yeah, it's just about concentrating and going the, the three days rather than the, the three kilometres sort of stuff. So, no, it's all good. Good way to start and we'll keep pushing on from here. Steve McKenzie's start is not good. The engine in the Opticote Fiesta is overheating and he's forced to slow to preserve the new car. But wheel time is the key issue this weekend. Still, SS1 is under his belt. Raz Vlad doesn't make the finish. Gearbox issues in the older model Fiesta sideline the team that's travelled across the country for WA. Theirs will be an early service. With the first stage going to Reeves, Scott Petter lifts the game, aiming to switch the result. Bellingen is unchanged from 2013, so he and Moskett know what to expect. They complete the 11 Ks a second a K quicker than last year and a massive 24 in front of the next car. It isn't Reeves, though. This is not the place to be sidelined without a mechanic, and Brendo knows it. Something went bang in sort of third gear and um, cut the engine, so I'm not sure. Something's internally gone wrong, um, won't fire back up, so I think it's safe just to park here on the side and we'll have to sadly watch everyone else go past. Michael Bowden and Helen Cheers take over second in stage, but there's a long way to go and this is an endurance rally. That was my whole strategy for the weekend because I knew uh, the two boys out in front would really push hard. You just don't know what can come out of anything yet. The Citroens are next fastest. Sullen's the quicker of the pair, but both 30 seconds off Peda. At 25 kilometres, Newry is the last stage before service. An easy victory for the Walkinshaw Performance Rally team. 35 in front of the Warhope Warrior. Tony Sullen suffers early in SS3. The DS3 engine not playing the game. F5 plus over hump and open. Knocked out again. His time is down, and Mick Patton slots into fourth. The second Citroen beats the Repco Polo, but Adrian Coppin is having his own dramas. Coppin's frustration is at boiling point, highlighting the importance of choosing the right compound Kumo. Wrong tyres, overshot, had a big moment in the first one. Overshot in that one. 
moments everywhere, big heavy landing, like it's just a disaster this morning. Steve McKenzie's day is possibly not much better. Um, the car's getting a little bit hot. Um, I think it's something to do with the computer telling the fan to cut out above 120, which comes on a standard car, and we're obviously averaging a fair bit above that. Back at Coffs Harbour, the Walkinshaw Performance Service crew is stiffening up the springs in the Renault. With Brendo out for the day, Pedder has opted for changes to help tyre wear. We're just changing the rear springs just to try and try and reduce the front tyre wear as much as we can. That's probably our biggest concern at the moment. We've done, you know, probably 25 k's, and the tyres are probably 60% worn. So, just trying to, uh, you know, we need to bank some tyres from at some point. No chance of running out of tyres for the Mazda 2. Finally retrieved and back in service, boss Mick Ryan watches on as the team pulls the top off an otherwise very reliable engine to reveal the damage. Yeah, broken a camshaft, which yeah, even with all the experienced guys here, no one's ever seen that before. Under the rules, Reeves and Joel Semino can't rejoin until leg two. So there's time to replace the head. And in the little Mazda 2, that means engine out. Rallying is certainly a family affair, so no surprise to see Mick Ryan's eldest son, Tom, entered in his first international event. Fro Horriman has the dubious honour of sitting alongside the P-Plater, right difficult here. job for any regular driver to undertake. Stay on the road, mate. No, don't use the bits on the edge. Look, I'm not going to say that, uh, that, that it's been an entirely stress-free, but... Tom has it well under control, and most of that uh, has come from, obviously, it's just a bit of a new relationship for me being a co-driver with Tom. It's the same gap from first to second through the repeat of hides. Bowden trails Pedder by 11 seconds. Bump left side minus. Start it again. Tony Sullen's fuel fix in service hasn't worked. We were on it, we were on it, and four times in there we had to stop, pull over on the side of the road, wait for the fuel, and then start back up and... Off we went again. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm so disappointed. The car is so fast through there. In the bits that the people saw that look good, it will be awesome. And the rest of it, we just stopped sitting on the side of the road waiting to go. Dip. Through the next right. stage, though, oh, fuel is not 100. his problem. Oh. 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 Shit. Jesus. Michael Bowden is second through Bellingen as well, but the Warhope Warrior is losing time to Pedder every kilometre. But he's well in front of Mick Patton. The other polo sneaks up into third in stage thanks to ongoing issues at Team Citroen. If Adrian Coppen thought catching his teammates' dust was bad, things only got worse in SS6 Newry. Six left over jump, 100. Oh, it's seizing up. The gearbox is seized up or something. Pull over here. It's not gearbox. It's a rock jammed between the brake caliper, wearing its way through the wheel rim. But there's more in store for Coppen. The left front drive shaft lets go before the end of stage, and he plummets to last. They say when it rains, it really pours, and while they'd suffered dust all day, it was a downpour by night at the super special stage back in Coffs Harbour. Coppen nursing the car through, desperate to make service before Park for May. Another clear win to Scott Pedder and a handy overnight lead and valuable points. And hopefully, a brighter day tomorrow for the rest of the field in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. Welcome back to Destination New South Wales, Coffs Coast in fact, the region hosting Coates Hire Rally Australia. The biggest news today is the rejoining of the Rally School Mazda 2. Yeah, there's highs and lows in our sport, but you need to keep working hard and hopefully we'll get back there today and get another 20 points on the board and, and keep the pressure on Scott and Dale. Pressure is coming from all quarters. The overnight rain has added another consideration. These are sort of like New Zealand roads and when you have 5 or 10 mil in New Zealand the roads group up and and the, the, the top, top gravel goes into the ground and stays there so uh, in theory it should be uh, really nice. Hopefully there hasn't been a huge amount of rain down that way but the roads should be nice and hard packed so hoping it shouldn't be too slippery but um, we'll get out there and see what we can come up with. Everybody's in the same boat, I think the biggest trouble is going to be getting out of this service park. Fortunately, competitors in the side-by-side -side challenge swing into action, and yes, that is an East Coast bull bar.
an hour south of Coffs Harbour, inland from Maxfield, teams ready for their start time. Our rally expert, Ross Duncanen, is already in stage checking out the road conditions. Day two of the rally and we're on the very first stage, the longest in fact, just under 50 kilometres in length. The World Rally cars are already on the stage, sweeping the road surface, which will allow the ARC car to have a smoother, safer run. But just up the road, they turn into the forest, and there's an excess of 100 lock-to-lock -lock corners with steep drops on either side. One small mistake there, and their rally will be over. No mistakes for Brendan Reeves. As Rhiannon indicated, they want the 20 points on offer today, and winning the first stage is what they need. By contrast, that pressure is off Scott Pedder and Dale Moskett. Even coming second today will give them 17 points so they can afford to ease up. But over 49 kilometres, nine seconds is hardly easing up. Into right entry, short three left. Michael Bowden is challenged for third by Adrian Coppen and pushes hard, maybe too hard. The Citroen driver has his measure, 12 seconds quicker than the VW Polo. But like Pedder, Coppen discovers that tyre management in this stage is absolutely critical. We wouldn't get any power down. Like at one point I thought something was the car, so I don't know what the other guys are doing. We've gone for a hard and yeah, I just couldn't put the power down. His teammate is down in fifth, but very happy. I took a bit gently for the first few corners just because everything's changed and put another crank sensor and stuff in it last night and it's great. Did the whole stage without conking out, so now all I need to do is work on my speed. So. North of Nambucca lies a sleepy little hollow. It's a big day in Bowerville when the World Rally comes to town and it's just where crews refuel before heading to the next special stage. Pedda is closer to Reeves. Still, the rally school Mazda takes the stage by three seconds. This is where experience dictates. Winning championship points is more important than winning stages. The Walkinshaw Renault captain is in command. Tom Ryan leads the non-registered two-wheel drives through the last stage before service. But it's the smallest car in the production field leading. Justin Northage and his Mitsubishi Mirage currently seventh overall. We took a lot of really big hits in the <laughs> rear end. And we got all this underbody protection hanging off our car, but thankfully she's still pushing forward. She's amazing. <laughs> no stopping her. For Steve McKenzie, his second day in the new Fiesta hasn't gone well. I'm stoked to realise it wasn't gearbox. As I, the guys have spent maybe an hour just putting another bolt in, whereas we could have been here all night trying to figure out what's inside the gearbox is wrong. A small window into the trials and tribulations of running a rally car. But our East Coast Bull Bar's insight this round has a twist. Turns out John Mills is doing more than just keeping Kumos up to the rally cars. Dean Herridge has this special ECB insight. It's John Mills from Kumo and Dean from Devil Ark. Tell us about the association with your company and these cute little fellas. Well, basically the association started about three years ago and uh, a percentage of each of the motorsport sales in Australia, each tyre sale, goes to support Devil Ark which um, Dean can tell you about. He's one of the uh, keepers up at Devil Oak, and he's the one who looks after these two little cuties here. Yeah, Dean, great to have you here. Tell us more about Devil Oak. So Devil Oak's a breeding uh, facility up at the Barrington Tops where we have around about 200 devils, and this year we had th uh, 33 joeys born. And without the help of uh, John, um, who donates money for every tyre sold, um, we wouldn't be able to have this little program going. To have them down here and all the international drivers to have, them, have a look at them and have a pat of them, it's, it's good for the good for Devil Oak and it's good for the sport putting something back into helping an endangered species. It certainly is. Well done, guys. Thanks. We'll be back with the rest of the action from day two of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship coming to you from Coffs Harbour in New South Wales in just a few moments. Welcome back. Tyres are playing a huge part in rallying and none more so than today in the long 49k stage. How many times would you change the tyres on your car at home? You might be lucky to change a set every 24 months. Well this weekend our East Coast Bull Buzz Australian Championship teams will use 24 over the weekend and they're restricted to that. So why is it so important to put the new tyres on and what does it mean for the drivers and the teams? 
Do you know, as you can see with the two tyres here, we have a brand new one and a used one. This has just come off after doing 50 kilometres and you can see all the blocks here are worn away as opposed to a new one. These inside blocks you know, create a lot of our, where we, when we brake and uh, gives us a lot of feeling under the wheel. Where these outside edges here, as you can see, it's almost non-existent on this tyre and this one is, uh, the shoulder is there, which gives us a lot of feeling through the steering wheel, especially when we turn in. As these wear away, you find the car really turns to understeer. Uh, and you're losing that grip. Also, as it, you know, the middle part of the tyre goes away, acceleration goes, hence a lot more wheel spin, so a lot more gear changes. When you go from something like this old one to a new one, it's almost like a brand new car. The feeling's unbelievable. And of course, for us, grip is speed in this sport. That's right, grip is speed, and you know, for us as a driver, it's all about confidence too. So when you've got to got the, putting the power down, and when you need to, you know, you're leaning on the tyre, and the tyre's working, you have a lot more confidence as a driver. The time's gone. That's right. Although that may all sound a little extreme, the same principles apply for your road tyres. Road tyres or rally tyres, punctures are an occupational hazard, especially on the rough surfaces in the middle of the long Nambucca stage. Peter is fast through the first 30 kilometres, extending his rally lead over Michael Bowden with each kilometre travelled. Currently, more than 3 minutes and 35 seconds. The other race, though, is for the leg. Here, Reeves and Gelsomino have the upper hand by just under 13 seconds. This longer stage will help their cause. The two fastest cars in the field are neck and neck by the halfway split. But all that soon changes. A puncture for Pedder, 32 k's in, plays right into their hands. Michael Bowden is unaware of the issue up ahead and with a two minute gap between cars, Pedder and Moskett rejoin before they arrive. The Warhope Warrior is half a second a K quicker than the first pass, but he is literally in their dust and he doesn't know it. We were catching Scott. Oh, oh, oh. He'd have to lose a lot of time though, wouldn't he? The yeah, Walkinshaw right. Renault still leads the rally by one and a half minutes. Team Citroen doesn't fare well in Nambucca. Flat. No way. It turns out to be a front left damper, making the car very unpredictable. Can't tell. No, that's right. It's a good. It'll be flap around, but it's crazy. Six right here, mate. Right three over Wooden Bridge, narrow. Sullins and Barkley 30. fare worse. Oh, don't. No, 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 oh. no. The back. With a little Lift spectator the encouragement, the, the second Citroen is on its way. But the time lost drops them down amongst the slower WRC cars. Mick Patton is fourth fastest to cross the stage. The Repco Polo consolidating third place overall behind Bowden. Tom Ryan's first assault on this stage wasn't so good this morning, spearing off neatly between two trees into a paddock know that because Henry Knott almost followed him in. Second pass, Tom might still be giving his co-driver a few scares, but his time is sixth in stage. One last Shire stage for the day, a second run over Valor. Both the Mazda and the Renault were not at their best through SS12. Such are the dynamics at play that Hedda, trailing this stage, is preserving his championship chances. While Reeves has half an eye on a small leak in the oil cooler, ensuring he gathers as many points as he can for the day's leg win. Ironically, they both finish the eight kilometre stage on exactly four minutes 57.2. It's been a good day for us other than that really, so the speed's been there. Uh, we wore out the tyres on Nambucca that second time around, that's for sure. So yeah, that was um, a good day really considering, but there's always things happen in rallying, that's part of it, so we'll keep moving on. For Michael Bowden, it's a second day playing second fiddle. First Pedder, and now Reeves. Uh, you've got to throw a spatter in the works there somewhere, it puts pressure on you a bit. It makes you uh, stand up and take notice and, and drive smart. And driving smart is Tony Sullins. After a less than ideal day on the Shire roads, he claims second fastest through the short special stage back in Coffs. But trouble is still following. Late oh, left three. Whoa. I've lost everything. I've lost, I've lost freaking back wheel. The car just went straight ahead, didn't turn in, but no idea. So the rotor's gone as well. Is it? Yeah, it snapped gone. the whole back of the thing off. I've got no brakes, I've got nothing. I was going to say, the brake caliper's there, but of course you're going to have nothing with the rotor there. Yeah, no, it's, it's all bad. So I have no clue. 
There's fireworks everywhere, especially back in the Citroen camp as the service crew await Sullen's arrival. He drops out of the fastest five leg results. Reeves grabs a maximum 20 points for winning the leg, with Coffin and Bowden separating Pedder from points for second. In rally terms, though, Scott Pedder still holds the lead by a minute 49 over Michael Bowden, with McPatton in third. The two Citroens are fourth and fifth, with Brendan Reeves climbing back, currently in ninth. There's still another day of competition left in the East Coast Bull Bars ARC. All that action coming up later in the program. But next, it's the Australian side-by-side -side challenge. Polaris versus Can-Am as Cody Crocker and Michael Guest go head-to-head -head once again. Coffs Coast the perfect place for fun in the sun. And what better way to do that than on a Polaris Razor or a Can-Am Maverick? It might have been considered a little unorthodox, but it's been a successful addition to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship over the last three seasons, and attracted some high-profile rally drivers in Cody Crocker and Michael Guest to showcase their respective models. There's another high-level Australian driver here this weekend for Rally Oz. Chris Atkinson is flying the flag for Hyundai, but also as ambassador for Coates Hire and their work in the Coffs region. Community event, Rally Australia here in, in the Coffs Coast, and obviously uh, with Coates Hire support um, and the, the Humpty Dumpty Foundation, it's great to be back here at the, the hospital and be able to give something back to the community. Coates Hire and the Humpty Dumpty Foundation donated a special monitor designed to measure a child's vital signs, especially in post-op patients where monitoring is most critical. They've donated this piece of equipment to our paediatric unit and it is a wonderful piece of equipment, we'll use it all the time. While ATCO's weekend was otherwise heavily involved with Hyundai, for Cody Crocker and Michael Guest, theirs was fighting it out in the Australian side-by-side -side challenge. Team Polaris grabbed the early advantage. 11 kilometres over Hyde's Creek set the pattern for the weekend. Crocker with a massive margin over his competition in the Razor 1000. Michael Guest was best of the rest. The Can-Am Mavericks second and third quickest. Nathan Shivers was just six behind the factory driver and both had the measure of another Razor. There's no excuses. Last year, the Maverick was was a weapon of a car, and um, where, where we didn't have any sort of little dramas, we, we you know we won here last year. We were the fastest in Victoria, and uh, it's a bit of a slap in the face to come back down and, and becoming second. Uh, it was fantastic to see Nathan Shivers win in South Australia. So so far, it's been a Polaris victory in WA, a Can-Am victory in South Australia, and Coffs Harbour's in the balance. But unfortunately, it's looking like the red team might get it. Phil Swindale in another red machine was standing in for regular driver Ian Hughes, who was otherwise occupied this weekend. So the ARB Tamworth boss was stepping up to the plate, filling in. He didn't do too bad either. Third through Bellingen after Shivers punctured and broke a CV joint. A couple of little problems out there. Just first one was the drive shaft going and then I uh, got in fixed into the next stage and um, got a flat and had to drive the second stage on a flat. I've still got the two stages tonight and we'll um, give them a shot. But the Polaris relief driver showed good form, second to Crocker in the first super special stage and going one better on the final stage, beating the factory outfit by 0.2 of a second. It was a daunting prospect entering this high profile round for rookie Andrew Taylor and the longer stage of the event, Nambaka proved too much for his Polaris 900. Oh, I started breaking down up the top of the hill there and popping and cracking and we thought it could have been the belt going but anyway, you're right, that's motorsport isn't it? <laughs> Michael Guest closed the Maverick to within half a second decay of the Razor across both morning stages. And the Polaris pilot banked a valuable buffer of 34 seconds for the day. For Crocker, the midsection of Nambucca, loathed by the rally teams, was made to order for side-by-sides. That's our territory up the hill. It's all yeah, really sort of jumpy, jumpy sort of stuff, short jumps and, and little crests and that sort of stuff. And lots of trees really close to the road, which I guess, you know, it doesn't really worry us, but uh, we're, we're pretty narrow, so we can get through all that sort of stuff pretty well and 
it's, it's, the whole stage is a blast. It wasn't all bad news for guests, though. An overnight media release about the new Can Am lineup had him excited. Can Am and the Maverick have released a new model for 2015, which is exciting. It's, uh, and it's turbocharged, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> the seesaw battle in the side-by-side -side challenge looks set to continue. By the end of leg two, Phil Swindale had finally elaborated on just why he was behind the wheel this event and not Hughes. Well, he's got his bucks party on this weekend and then he gets married next weekend. So he wasn't allowed to race, so he decided he'd still come over here with all his uh, mates. And um, last, he was last... Um, Cited wearing a tutu and dirty dancing with Cody Crocker last night at the Maui Maui. The friendly rivalry had continued in stage today, although Swindale was adamant the change in crew comms was unplanned. We've lost our communications. It's all hand signals at the moment, so we're a little bit slower today. Crocker did beat Swindale at the super special stages, but Nathan Shivers took pole 40. and not of the fastest time variety. Oh, God, kidding me. Ah, uh, bugger it. Andrew Taylor was back in the mix for their final leg, appreciative of the support from his competition. Yeah, them guys are just in a league of their own, so yeah, they've been really helpful too. Uh, Greg and Cody, any tips and helpful little things with um, our co-driver Justin and first time we've done pace notes. No smiles on the faces of Les Shivers and Peter Harris through Shipman's. The side-by-sides might have the advantage in the tight forest stages, but the creek crossings did highlight a watery shortcoming. Worse was to come. The second Anglo Moyle Maverick got caught in the soft sand, and the elder Shivers was sidelined. Well, uh, you're right. Well, uh, well, you've broken. Broken something. As I accelerated, she just accelerated sideways <laughs> instead of forward uh, and took the embankment. So it's all down to the driver. <laughs> the jumps in Bunker had guest flying on the limit. Nathan Shivers was also pushing his Maverick, but the result was more serious. By the repeat of Shipman's, he and Adam Tillett lined up without rear-wheel drive. Their weekend couldn't have got any worse. Well, or so we... they thought. Oh, no, no! Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding me. A clean sweep for Crocker and Greg Folletta, with Guest and David Green second, and a jubilant Phil Swindale and David Piper in third. Polaris 1, Can-Am 2, Polaris 3, Can-Am 4. The battle will continue in the final round of the Australian Side-by-Side -side Challenge. And the final leg of the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship will be played out right after the break. The sun rises on the Coffs Coast for the final day of Coates Hire Rally Australia. With the exception of Friday night, the weather has been kind to East Coast Bull Bars ARC. But it's not the weather putting pressure on teams. Day three and the start of leg three. Now there's no easing in the pressure for crews today. They have over 100 kilometres of competitive stages on rough forest roads like this one. Day one was taken out by Scott Petter. To come and meet the challenge, it was Brendan Reeves who took out day two. So this one is the decider. But this is known as a, an endurance event in the Australian Rally Championship. So there are bonus points on offer for the fastest team over the three days. And at the present moment, the fast man is Scott Petter. I know Brendan's going to be going fast. He needs, he needs to win today. He needs to, to continue what he did yesterday. Um, for us, it's just to sort of continue at the same pace, keep some pressure on, um, not let him get too far ahead. And uh, you know, if the car feels good, we'll push on. Uh, the way the points work, I see it's very important to finish today. I did the bonus, you know, the, the 40 points is up, so uh, only 20 for the heat win. So you look, you know, you really need to make sure that's almost more valuable finishing than it is getting a heat win, for example. Coppin is fourth through the first stage of the day, Shipman's. Finishing will be his priority to maximise the championship points. After a less than satisfactory day two, his teammate is clear on his objective. I think we might try and make some amends today. <laughs> Just go out and rally like we're supposed to do. Fast as I can go today, see what happens. And what happens is his third fastest through Shipman's, trailing Pedder and Reeves. 
Steve McKenzie isn't in this rally for points. The Optico Fiesta is slightly under the required weight, which means he's not in the running for points. Not in it for a championship, we just want to get some good stage done under our belt, which we haven't been able to do so far. The McKenzie brothers bank a fifth in stage. They're two places ahead of Nick Patton, but he has a solid hold on second for the weekend. Testimony to consistent driving and minimal risk. Adrian Coppen can't beat Team Repco, but equally, Patton and Bernie Webb can't catch Pedder. Reeves must win today to maintain any chance of winning the championship. Pedder can afford to back off and preserve his points lead, but Michael Bowden is less than two minutes behind in the race for the rally. And as we've seen, a flat tyre can change everything in an instant. It does change in an instant but not through a tyre. Lost oil pressure. Have we? If you're OK, sign help. I don't mind. The engine oil cooler decided enough was enough. Just two Ks into the shipment stage. Motor locked up. Gut-wrenching because, you know, we had a fairly comfortable spot and we were just going to try and maintain that today. But I, this is one of the lows of the sport and I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a bit over it, actually. It's home time two for junior Six Tom left. Ryan. But one of the ends bad. Oop, that's a gear. Yeah, so I was keen to have a, have a good day today, but unfortunately just over a bit of a jump in third gear. On the landing, a bit hard, and I was a little bit on the gas just to keep the nose off the ground, and back at Rayfield made the decision to put it back on the trailer and head home. Petter's start to the legs saw a 19-second lead over Reeves, and his hot pace continued through the next stage. Bunker. But electrical gremlins creep in and the Walkinshaw Renault lands heavily off a jump mid-stage that breaks an engine mount. From inside the cabin though, it seems like a different problem. Things might be starting to unravel for the championship leading car. On hard compound tyres, Brendan Reeves surprises himself. I thought I'd be disadvantaged because I had the hards on. It's actually really slippery in there, we needed the mediums. Uh, even under brakes, it's pretty slippery, but uh, that's good if we pulled a lot out of Scott in that short one. And for a guy not interested in points, Steve McKenzie is certainly bagging some good times. Third fastest, making the most of testing his Opticote Fiesta. McKenzie leads both Citroens through this stage. Tony Sullivan's best, a second decay quicker than Coppen, who made the wrong decision to continue on the worn tyres from Shipman's. By using the only good news spare, Coppen does regain some ground through wedding bells, finishing three in front of the other Citroen. But it's not enough to beat McKenzie, who finishes second in stage to Reeves. Scott Petter drops out of the top results. But now without Michael Bowden to challenge for the event lead, the pressure is reduced. Now though, with a mechanical issue and an electrical drama exacerbated with a good dose of water, he and Moskett nursed the Renault out of stage and back to service. But only just. We uh, arrived with about 11 volts and then obviously just sitting there. Um, fans would have been on and all that sort of stuff. Um, it lost heaps, you know, a uh, full, full volt every minute, so I turned it off. With the spark back in the Renault and the engine mount repaired, Scott Petter of old returns, blasting through one of his favourite stages to another victory, this time by 10 seconds in shipment. Reeves' effort to stay in front takes its toll on the rally school Kumos. The lucky charm is hardly sitting still today. Just prior to the repeat of Bucker, Petter's electrical gremlin reappears. But then luckily for them, the stage is cancelled due to a crash in the WRC and teams transport through to the start of the final stage of the rally. Travelling amongst the international field, the Citroens are first ARC cars to cross the line. Adrian Coppen has somehow managed to overcome a weekend of ups and downs to make the finish, the most critical factor in amassing points at an endurance round. 100. Tony Sullen's weekend has been up and down as well, but he saves the biggest moment till last.
Remarkably, he and Julia Barkley dragged the wrecked DS3 through the last half of Wedding Bells to post a finish. It was only a really soft roll, but far out gutted for that, I tell you. Trying, probably trying a bit too hard, but, you know. For a bloke who's gutted, I can't believe that smile on your face. Uh, we're rallying still, mate. We've got to be having fun, even if you're upside down. <laughs> Scott Petter and Dale Moskett's luck with the cancelled Bucker stage might have just made their rally. The Renault limps through the final stage, unable to rev past 4,000 RPM. That's a touch more than half throttle. So any more special stages and their rally win might just have been in jeopardy. We uh, lost a minute and a half in that last one, so we might lose a couple of points for the day, but anyway, we won the rally, which is good. For Brendan Reeves and Rhiannon Gelsolino, they've done everything they could to recover from the League One disaster, breaking a camshaft. A leg win in two and again today means they get at least 40 points. But still good signs and good work by the team to get the car back out there and get it to finish both uh, legs with two leg wins, so that's 40 points for that. So there's plenty of positives still in it and it's going to be fired on for Rally Victoria. Again, Adrian Coppin is second for the leg, but his teammate is very lucky to be in the fastest five after stumbling at the post. Mick Patton rounds out the fastest five in what's been a stellar and consistent weekend for him. Plenty of contenders for the Kumo Spirit of the Rally Award, which, in the end, goes to Steve McKenzie. It's been a good haul of points for Scott Petter this weekend. The formula of legs and overall sees him with 89. Adrian Coppin is second on 76 points, while Mick Patton's gained 70. Salvaging 67 points is a fine effort from Brendan Reeves, considering his engine issues. And Tony Sullins will be thankful for 63 after his weekend. There's a big gap now to Brendan Reeves, but post-scrutiny issues concerning Mick Patton's car might give him another four points. And that four points is something he would be very grateful for coming into the final round. That's it from the Coffs Coast, Coates Hire Rally Australia. We look forward to your company when the teams regroup south of the border for one final battle. We hope you can join us there. In the meantime, as always, for more information, check out rally.com.au. I'm Greg Rust. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Today's coverage is made possible by Destination New South Wales. Kumo Tyre, Pedder Suspension, Armour, Coates Hire, Can Air, Polaris, High Tech Oils, and our supporting partner, East Coast Bull Bars, world's best alloy bull bars.